Shalom, shalom. Beloved brothers and sisters, today uh, I'm preaching a message that the Lord has now urged me for the last three weeks. And I, I did not like his order. He wants me to preach about heaven and hell. And he told me, Maria, if the people miss heaven, hell is guaranteed. And you know, then I realized Maybe the people that listen to this message now will choose the right way. Will choose Jesus Christ who died on our behalf, who paid all the penalty that the devil demanded for the high treason in, in the Garden of Eden from, from uh, Adam and Eve. <clears throat> I do trust that many will recognize that hell is a reality. The devil is a reality, just like God is a reality and heaven is a reality. And God said, uh, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. God doesn't want us to live hell on earth, but so many people live hell on earth because of their choice, because of the choices their forefathers have made, because of the wrong thinking, because of the wrong faith, because we put our faith in the wrong people, in the wrong messages, in the wrong institutes. Dear ones, it is so important that you know where you're going. Because without knowing that, with this assurance, you will most likely miss heaven and not miss hell. And hell is for eternity. Just like heaven is for eternity. And dear ones, I asked here now to write out some scriptures for me, and my secretary was so sweet and did that. <clears throat> I think I will have more messages on this because it is such an important issue. It's, it's the, the, the destiny of our lives. God created us to live in eternity with him, in glory, in beauty. In, it, it says, eye has not seen, ear has not heard. No, it has not entered any man's heart what God has prepared for those that love him or trust him. So, you know, uh, you know, in the Old Testament, of course, you know, there was much judgment. But in the New Testament, we have Jesus who paid the price. But in Jude 1.7, it says, In a similar way, Sodom and Gomorrah and the surrounding towns gave themselves up to sexual immorality and perversion. They serve as an example of those who suffer the punishment of eternal fire. Dear ones, I've said to the Lord several times that this is not only Sodom and Gomorrah, what we are going through now, it is even worse than that. In Revelation 21, 8, but as for the cowardly, you know I was a coward many years, and when I read that, that the cowardly, are mentioned among the faithless, the detestable, the murderers, the sexually immoral, the sorcerers, the idolaters, and all liars. Their portion will be in the lake that burns with fire and sulfur, which is the second death. Dear ones, I never knew that cowardice was such a sin that keeps you away from God. Oh, I repented very much when I read that the first time. So dear ones, there is a second death. It's a lake of fire and it burns in eternity. You know, there are so many people, especially in the Western world, also in Africa now, but in the Western world especially, that think you're crazy if you believe that there's a devil and there is hell. But they will have the shock of their lives for eternity. Because I believe the word of God, not the opinion of man, and the word of God is very clear. <coughs> yeah. Uh, you know, in Matthew 18, 9, if your eye causes you to stumble, block it out and throw it from you. It is better for you to enter life with one eye than to have two eyes and be cast into the fiery hell. You know, God doesn't want us to, to pull out the eye, but he wants us to know how important that it is that we look at things like he does and that we use our eyes to see the glory of God. <coughs> yeah. And, uh, and I don't want to be accused by anybody. Why did you not warn me? I want to warn you. If you miss heaven, 
hell is guaranteed. And it's not the choice of God, it's your choice. He offers you heaven and hell, but you, with your decision, with your, uh, the way you want to live your life here on earth, either under the leadership of the Holy Spirit or under the leadership of evil spirits, you bear the consequences. God is not, for, doesn't want anybody to perish. That's why he sent us Jesus Christ, his son, and we'll talk about this later. But now I want to go to Matthew 13, uh, from verse 35, Matthew 13, verse 35. This was in fulfillment of what was spoken by the prophet. I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter things that have been hidden since the foundation of the world. Then he left the throngs and went into the house. And his disciples came to him saying, there was Jesus, explain to us the parable of the darnel in the field. We also can call it the weeds or the wild, wild wheat. He answered, he who sows the good seeds is the son of man. The field of the world and the good seeds, and, and the good seed means the children of the kingdom of God. The darnel or the wheat is the children of the evil one. And the enemy who sowed it is the devil. The harvest is the, is the close and consummation of the age and the reapers are the angels. And I don't think it needs much, much spiritual discernment to know that we are close and at the consummation of the age. I think we are already at the end of the end times. And, uh, and we need to take those signs serious and hear what the word of God says. Just as the darnel, verse 40, the wild wheat or the, the, the weeds is gathered and burnt with fire, so it will be at the close of the age. The Son of Man will send forth his angels and they will gather out his kingdom, all causes of offense, persons by whom others are drawn into error or sin and all who do iniquity and act wickedly. Dear ones, I think we have many people right now that are under the control of not the Holy Spirit and they draw many people into error and into sin and into iniquity <clears throat> and cast them into the furnace of fire. There will be weeping and wailing and grinding of teeth. <clears throat> then will the righteous, those who are upright and in right standing with God, and you can only be in right standing with God if you make Jesus Christ your life. If you accept his righteousness, nobody can make himself righteous. Darlings, if there had been a way to make yourself righteous, I would have found it. Oh, I tried so hard. And all I got was a burnout. And then God, I said, Lord, I'm trying so hard. He said, yeah, we are very trying. I said, what, what, what is then this life about? He said, I don't, I don't want your good works. I want you. God wants you to abide in you, to live through you, to move through you, to speak through you. And he has a dream for your life. <clears throat> I read it again. Then will, um, there will be a testing, okay? The testing of hearts. And, <clears throat> and then will be the righteous, those who are upright and in right standing with God by having received the righteousness of God, who is Jesus Christ. Shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father, let him who has ears be listening and consider and perceive and understand by listening. The kingdom of heaven is like something precious buried in a field, which uh, a man found and hid again. Then in his joy, he goes and sells all he has and buys his field. You know, a friend of mine, uh, of mine told me once, God, if God finds five people that love him more than anything in their lives, and hate sin more than anything in their lives. He would change the world with those five people. He didn't say man, he said people. Uh, so women, children, everyone that loves God more than anything else, even himself, and hates sin more than anything, God will be able to transform 
this world. So, you know, God gave us so many parables about the kingdom of God, and we have already made a lot of YouTubes about this. I promise you, the Bible is now alive like never before. When I read the Bible now, I feel that it has been written last week because it so much fits the present situation of this world. So start reading the Word of God. You will go from glory to glory. You will go from insight to insight. You will go from revelation to revelation. And you don't need a preacher for that. You don't need a pastor or priest. Read the Word of God. And Matthew is full of it. And then revelations. <clears throat> so in, uh, in Matthew... Let me see. 25. Uh, from 31 on. <clears throat> when the Son of Man comes in His glory, His majesty and splendor, and the Son of Man is Jesus Christ, the complete man. That's the one we should resemble more and more by walking with Him. So when the Son of Man comes in His glory, His majesty and splendor, and all the holy angels with Him, those that not, did not rebel in pride against God, then He will sit on the throne of His glory. All nations shall be gathered before Him. Dear ones, I'm so surprised that it says, it doesn't say all denominations, all nations shall be gathered before him. We have the call to make a disciple out of our nations. We are, we are trusting to make a disciple out of Uganda. You need to make a disciple out of Kenya, out of Nigeria, out of South Africa, out of Cameroon, out of Germany, Austria, Switzerland, England, Sweden. We are to make disciples of our nations. <coughs> They will all be gathered before him and he will separate them, the people from one another, as a shepherd separates his sheep from the goats. And he will cause the sheep to stand at the right hand, but the goats at his left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you blessed of my father, that is you, uh, that is you favored of God and appointed to eternal salvation, inherit, receive his own. Uh, let me see here. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, be blessed of my father, that is you favored of God and appointed to eternal salvation. Inherit, receive as your own the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Now, what kingdom is that? Let me show you which people are the ones that will reach that kingdom. Thank you. <clears throat> For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you brought me together with yourselves and welcomed and entertained and lodged me. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me with help and ministering care. I was in prison and you came to see me. Then the just and upright will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and gave you food or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when did we see you a stranger and welcomed and entertained you or naked and clothed you? And when did we see you sick or in prison and came to visit you? And the king will reply to them, Truly I say to you, in as far as you did it to one of the least in the estimation of men, of these, my brethren, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, be gone from me. You cursed into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not welcome me and entertain me. I was naked and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison and you did not visit me with help and ministering care. Then they also in their turn will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not minister to you? 
and he will reply to them, Solemnly I declare to you, insofar as you fail to do it for the least of these in the estimation of man, you fail to do it for me. Then they will go away into eternal punishment. But those who are just and upright and in right standing with God into eternal life. Dear ones, it's so easy. It's so easy. But it's a total different thinking from the world. The world says, try to get as much as you can. Corrupt, steal, lie. But the Bible says, give until it hurts. And whenever you start giving, in the opportunities God is offering you daily, you will see how God will bless you. And especially what you give to the poor. The Bible says, what you give to the poor, you lend to God. And I promise you, God is not allowing any debts on his account. He will pay you back, not 10, not 30, not 60, but 100 for it. I experience it with all my heart. How God is blessing us because we are dealing, we are helping the poor. We are clothing them, we are, we are giving them opportunity to learn, we are, we are having a big ministry in the prisons of Uganda. And I promise you, where I have experienced Jesus the most was with the death candidates in Luzira prison in Kampala. Every time I was with them, with the death candidates, I felt when I came out, I was on cloud seven. And I said, Lord, why am I so happy? I was with the dead candidates. He said, no, 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 no. You came to visit me. That's why you are so happy. And you know, from the over 400, over 470 that were there, and I prophesied over them that they are there in the University of the Holy Spirit, and that they are prepared to be the preachers outside. And I was led to the highest leader of that prison said, if you, if you talk such nonsense, we don't want you to be here anymore. These men are all condemned to die a natural death or through hanging. There's no chance for them to get out. I said, I'm sorry. I, am, I was totally surprised myself when these words came out of my mouth. But I said, Lord, prove to me, prove to them that these were words from you. Now, as I sit here, there are about 70 death candidates. And in all these years, the president has not signed one death sentence. Glory to God. Glory to God. You know, God sometimes puts you in a desert to deal with you. Ah, he puts you in a place where you're not distracted by nothing, by nobody, to speak to you kindly. How many times I ended up in a situation that was like a desert? I said, where did I miss? A landmark, where did I miss a sign? He said, uh -uh, I drew you. I pulled you into the desert in order to speak very friendly with you. And you know, as soon as you have understood the message in the desert and you have a cooperative heart with what God's plans are, you will get out of that prison. And many of these men, we even hired some of these men in our ministry and they're wonderful people. And all of these men have become wonderful men of society. But what we had to do, we had to teach them how to ask for forgiveness from the relatives of the victims, because all of them were murderers. And they started writing letters to the relatives, confessing their sin and asking for forgiveness. And as soon as they were reconciled with all the relatives, and with God, they were released. Either total freedom or lifetime, and that is an easy to get out of that one. So dear ones, God is giving us choices every day. <clears throat> God doesn't want anybody to go to hell. If you go to hell, it's your choice. Because God says, everyone, if you receive, Jesus Christ into your life. The one that paid the price 100% for your life. The one that brought you out of darkness into the light. <clears throat> if you do that, if you say, Jesus, I need you, come into my life. 
I receive you as my Lord and Savior. I receive you as my life. I receive you as my righteousness. I receive you as my eternal destiny. I receive you as my best friend. I receive you as my bridegroom. I receive you as the greatest lover of this world. And you live connected with him. It says in John 15, if you remain in me, Jesus says, and my words remain in you, you can ask what you want and it will be done unto you. Dear ones, I never dreamt what God has in store for those that trust him 100%, 100%. Not 95%, you know, half a Christian is, is just garbage, just garbage. Amen. Now I want to read another one <clears throat> uh, for you. You can look in the Bible, look in a, <clears throat> look in a concordance and look for hell and you will be shocked what there is. <clears throat> uh, let's go to Matthew 23. <clears throat> and next time, dear ones, I will um, give you a message of Jesus, what Jesus has accomplished for us. Uh, you will be surprised. It's so good. Matthew 33, come on. No, that can Oh, 23, I'm sorry, 23. 23, <clears throat> with verse, let's start with 23. Uh, Matthew tw 23, 30, 23. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees. These are the religious pretenders, hypocrites. For you give a tenth of your mint and dill and come in and have neglected and omitted the weightier, more important matters of the law, right and justice and mercy and fidelity. These you ought particularly to have done, which means 10% belong to God in the Old Testament, in the New Testament forever, uh, without neglecting the other. It's not doing the 10%, but also giving people justice and mercy and fidelity. So, you know, we just think sometimes, uh, people think when they go to church on Sunday and sit on a church bench for an hour and, you know, work on the YouTube or something or, or, on, your, or on your WhatsApp, but you are seated there. Huh? You're in church. You have fulfilled the duty. You have fulfilled the law. No, God wants you to be in his presence always. Every moment of your life. I even bring myself under the protection of the King Most High in my sleep. I pray, Father, I come now and I rest in your arms. So we should give the tithe, we should do the right things, but we should not, not forsake uh, uh, justice and mercy and fidelity. And then in verse 24, it says, you blind guys filtering out a gnat and gulping down a camera. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees. Dear ones, these are the religious leaders, even of our days. Scribes and Pharisees, pretenders, hypocrites. That's what Jesus said. That was, that was we think, not love. It was the truth. But it was a mirror that he gave them so that they can change. For you clean the outside of the cup of the, and of the platter. But within they are full of exor exhaustion, prey, spoil, plunder, and grasping self-indulgence. You blind Pharisee, first clean the inside of the cup and of the plate so that the outside may be clean also. God is not looking at the outside. He's not looking what, what brand your clothes are, you know? By the way, all my dresses are no, t no more expensive than 40000 because I told the Lord, Lord, I am your representative, so you better dress me well, but I have no money. <laughs> so please give me the best price for the best quality. And he does it. In verse 27, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, pretenders, hypocrites, for you are like tombs that have been whitewashed, which look beautiful on the outside, but inside are full of dead men's bones and everything impure. Just so, you also outwardly seem to people to be just and upright, but inside you are full of pretense and lawlessness and iniquity. 
Verse 29, woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, pretenders, hypocrites, for you build tombs for the prophets and decorate the monuments of the righteous, saying, if we had lived in the days of our fathers, forefathers, we would not have aided them in shedding the blood of the prophets. <laughs> Thus you are testifying against yourselves that you are the descendants of those who murdered the prophets. Fill up then the measure of your father's sins to the brim so that nothing may be wanting to a full measure. You serpents, I tell you, Jesus did not pretend of what he see. He called a spade a spade. He said, you serpents, you spawn of vipers, how can you escape the penalty to be suffered in hell? Gehenna. Because of this, take notice, I am sending you prophets and wise men, interpreters and teachers and scribes, men learned in the Mosaic law and the prophets. Some of them you will kill, even crucify, and some you will flog in your synagogues and pursue and persecute from town to town. So that upon your heads may come all the blood of the righteous, those who correspond to the divine standard of right, shed on earth from the blood of the righteous Abel to the blood of Zechariah, son of Barachia, whom you murdered between the sanctuary and the altar of burnt offerings. Truly I, I declare to you, all this evil <coughs> will come upon this generation. Well, dear ones, I don't want to continue reading because you can read that yourself. But you know, <coughs> in our days, we harvest what we have sown. It's years already that we have made laws, especially in the Western world, that scream to heaven, that are totally against the orders of God, that are totally against respect of God's orders. We have made our own orders. I don't want to even repeat them, but there are many, many, many. And I am very, very thankful that God's long suffering has waited this long to bring us to our senses and to tell us enough is enough. So please, dear ones, all of you, repent, repent. Yeah, we can easily show it another person, you need to repent. No, God says you repent. Ask the Holy Spirit to test your heart and to see if there are any ways of pain there. Please allow the Holy Spirit to test you through and through. And you will see the peace that comes into your heart. Once Jesus can penetrate you from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet, which is from the high ceiling to the deepest basements in your life, that he can come and bring light into every situation that you've ever been through in your life. I have been through it, darlings, and I know what it means to come out of darkness into the light. Today, there's not a single person in my life that I wouldn't want to come and see me here. I have forgiven everybody. There's not a single place I wouldn't want to go because they have bad memories. Everything has been dealt with in the light of God. But the Lord had a long way, and he wants you to go from joy to glory, from strength to strength, from joy to joy, from light to light, from revelation to revelation, from miracle to miracle, from glory to glory. In every which way, if that is in your own life, in your marriage, in your relationship with your children, in your relationship with the government, in your relationship with the tax orders, God wants us to be right in every level of life. And then the enemy has no, no place anymore to torture us. Forgive as Jesus has forgiven you. And you will see the joy of the Lord that is coming and the release of relationships. I love you. And I pray that my words will hit your heart and that you will be, maybe you should be scared of hell because it's something to be scared about, but that it scares you into heaven because God is waiting with open arms in heaven for each one of you 
because he allowed his son to go through the price that was necessary to buy us out of darkness into the light. Shalom. Shalom.